Some of you have seen this in our gaming test video and asked how did we actually get it to appear in our phones? What app is this? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you what this is. So, it is actually an app called Scene. The full name is Vito Scene and uh, we can do quite a lot of things with it. So, let me just zoom out and show you guys here. As you can see, when we have everything set up, this is how it looks. It will show you the amount of memory you have, your CPU and GPU utilization, all of those stuff alongside the temperature. Uh, the temperature is the core temperature, not the SOC package temperature. So the package temperature is always going to be lower than the core temperature. And the battery temperature is also another value right here. So this module here pretty much just show us the core temperature. They are different from the SOC package temperature and we can actually select what to display. So you have the classical monitor, this one. Uh, I used this in a few of the gaming test videos before, but uh, it's not really that precise since it doesn't actually show you the numbers. For example, the GPU is now shown as question marks because it just doesn't have the uh, GPU core clock speeds because for whatever reason, the Snapdragon 8 Elite just doesn't actually display it. But we do have the CPU clock speeds displayed and that's it. For the process monitor, we can see that this is what it looks like. It just shows you the um, performance, how much it takes up in terms of the total performance available. So again, this one, I don't really use it as well because it just isn't applicable for our usage. So disable that. Thread monitor is pretty much similar to the process monitor. It shows you for each thread that the processor has, how it's been utilized and whatnot. And then mini monitor. Yes, this is the mini monitor that I was using, the one at the top here. So it shows you the CPU utilization. The GPU utilization, again, because the clock speed is not available, it wouldn't display anything to us. And then here's the FPS, as you know, this Oppo Find N5 has LTPO display of uh, 1 to 120Hz and that is why if we are not doing anything, it will go all the way down to 1Hz and in this case, 1FPS. And here's the power draw. Not really sure how accurate is the power draw but we do have it. And the temperature there is actually the... And if we wait a little while longer, it will display the temperature. And that temperature is actually the battery temperature that we have here, 328 and if we go up here and wait for a while, 32.9, uh, yeah, it's about the same. But yeah, that is the battery temperature, not the SOC temperature. So uh, FPS stats, yeah, this is the ever famous orange dot yellow, orange dot that you see in our gaming test video, this one, this is the FPS. Um, we will get back to this later because it does more than just the FPS and the temperature. Here it is. If you see properly here, it will show you the battery temperature, the CPU core temperature, GPU core temperature, and also your RAM module temperatures. Again, no SOC temperature, which I hope they have the SOC temperature for us, but maybe in another version. So uh, I will usually just use these three bottom options because the mini monitor FPS stats and the monitor temperature monitor are what I care about. So within this app itself, you can see there are quite a lot of things that you can do as well, uh, especially when you go to this menu here. So this menu, you can see all of the processors and whatnot, which we have already gone through just now. But what I'm interested in is the FPS stats. So in here, you can see, um, how should I show this? Okay, let's go back to Xenozone Zero for a while. So you can see there's this button here showing me that it's in 60 FPS. If I press it, it becomes red color and then it asks me duration. If I don't do anything, then it will record indefinitely. So I just walk around the city here. Pay attention to the number. I'm not going to do any cuts to the video as well. And then you can see 57 there, 57 again. And if I teleport to the next place, let's just go for uh, maintenance area, why not? So the FPS drops when it is loading. 
as expected and once we're here we're back to 60 fps okay do keep in mind how the number changes because it is literally recording everything that we are doing in the game right now so once i'm back here i will hit this it says frame rate finish which just means recording finish so now if we go back to scene we can see that it has recorded Xenozone 0 the time is 8 p.m yes it is 8 p.m right now so if we press on it we can see all of these data so maximum frame rate minimum frame rate the these two value no actually these three values they aren't exactly useful if loading screens are included because you can see here when we teleport from location to location in the game the frame rate drops all the way down to like 3 fps so we get tips like this but overall we can see if we just ignore this it's quite stable in the city and then down here we got the frame time uh, the frame time is important the lower the frame time the better because uh, it just means how long the frame is hold is held before flipping to another frame on the screen this is more towards the pc side of things because if you're familiar with pc gpu benchmarking then you should be familiar with all of these terms then cpu usage we can change how this graph appears as well so this bold blue line is the overall average of the utilization whereby the cpu 0 to 4 I'm not sure why they split from 0 to 4 and 5 to 6 so they treat it as two different clusters and then at the bottom here we got the core clock speeds how it fluctuates according to how we play the game and then the power consumption uh, the power consumption works kind of well so we can see that it's usually at around 5 watts and then drop to about 3 point something watts so the average is 3.94 watts and the minimum is 1.84 watts maximum is 5.08 watts i am still trying to learn how to use all of this data because if we look at the earlier Zender Zone zero gaming test about the uh, flower boss battle here we can see the frame rate really fluctuates a lot and then the frame time also fluctuates a lot the CPU utilization is weird because it seems like it is not taking advantage of the multi-core configuration. So we have one core that is going ham on everything here. It's like pegged at nearly 100% most of the time. And then everything else is kind of sitting like around the 60% and lower. Then for the core clock speeds, we can see, I don't know what happened here. It only spikes up to 4000 megahertz for a split second for one of the cores or at least one cluster of the core so that's how it goes we can also change it to this view or change it to another view uh, again i'm still trying to learn how to make use of all of this data and then for the power consumption ha, huh, this is interesting so maximum is 5.49 watts which is this one here and then Minimum is 1.01 watts, which I think is when it is in the transition of loading to another screen. The average is 3.42 watts. Yeah, those are all of the data. And that's how you use the VTool scene. Now, you do have to do quite a lot of setup to make VTool scene work on your phone. So I will put this phone aside for now. So I have the Realme 14X with me here, and I will show you how to make use of the vtools scene so firstly you will have to of course download a few things um, first thing is you need to download vtools scene i will show you how when you google vtools scene you will have this vtools uh, om arena om area om area i don't know how to pronounce this but yeah go into this it will show you this website don't bother, scroll all the way down, press this little blue button here and download this. By the time you watch this video, it should have been updated to a newer version but um, the whole idea is the same and they consistently update the app which is what I like. So download scene 815 and uh, it says cannot be downloaded securely, whatever, keep, and then 
once it's downloaded just install i have already installed it so i will cancel and you will also need to head to the google play store and download something called shizuku so find shizuku download and this is a free app by the way and once you have downloaded open the app it will have this interface here press pairing and then it will show you all of these uh, permissions that it needs so just hit here allow notifications okay and then we tell you to start the pairing process you will need to do all of these things i will just show you how to do it so press developer options scroll to wireless debugging enable it it doesn't matter then go into wireless debugging and then press on pairing code it will show you this number then we, shizuku will pop up enter pairing code just type whatever is shown here 475598 and then press on this button here pairing successful and then now we can go back to shizuku go back here press start and once everything is done it will show you that shizuku is running but because realme phones actually uh, Xiaomi, Samsung, uh, quite a lot of phones will need some extra steps to be taken before we can actually use Shizuku. So for Realme phones, we actually need to do another step and that is to go into developer options. Uh, you have to scroll somewhere near the bottom here. Disable permission monitoring. This is specifically for Realme, OnePlus and Oppo phones. I suspect Vivo is the same as well but I can't confirm it. Just take note that every phone brand will have something to do before we can actually use Shizuku. So uh, disable this and then we will see that the error message has disappeared. Uh, but we will still start once more just to make sure everything works without any issues. Okay, so now you can see Shizuku is running version 13.5 with ADB and now we can hit into scene and then it will ask you all of this permission and whatnot just agree and then when we're in here press ADB mode then it will show you all of the agreement and whatnot just press accept agree and then yes all the time once you have set everything up, you should be seeing the main screen of the VTool scene, which is what we've shown you earlier. And uh, another thing that you need to do is to do this app info. This applies to all phones. Display over other apps. Remember to enable this so that the overlay works. So now when we press this button here, we can do this, this, this. So yeah, basically everything that we've shown you just now. Oh god, I can't move this. But anyway, you get the idea. This is how you get VTool scene working. And uh, for this phone in particular, the temperature of the battery is shown, but the chip battery is not shown. The, I mean the core battery. So we only have this lonely battery temperature here. Yeah, kind of sad, but that's how VTool scene works. And that is also how you set it up. Moving forward, I think that I will use VTool Scene with the recording feature because it does help a bit, but I still can't really uh, make use of all the data yet. So do let me know how I can make use of those data in the comment section below because I am very interested to know what you guys think because if we have all of this data, yes, I can see the FPS fluctuation, good, but how about the uh, CPU consumption, the CPU usage, and also, most importantly, the wattage. I would really like to see the total amount of watt hours consumed during the entire gaming session uh, within the time. Oh, uh, I should also mention that VTool Scene actually lets you see the render resolution of the game as well, which is why I am really surprised to see. And I'm going to use VTool Scene for all gaming tests in the future except for Samsung devices because Samsung's built-in GPU watch is already very good. So yeah, that's how you get 
V2C working, running, and log everything that you need to know. And if you have any questions, do let us know down in the comment section below. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.